Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at rate equations and rate constants K. We're going to talk about what these terms actually mean, how we can construct rate equations for a given reaction, and the rearranging of a rate equation to calculate the rate constant K. Rates of reaction, orders of reaction, and using rate equations to predict reaction mechanisms have all been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about rate equations and rate constants, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Rates of reaction describe how quickly reactions are occurring. They can be measured in terms of the speed at which reactant concentration decreases or the speed at which product concentration increases, given the units moles per decimeter cubed per second. In order for a reaction between two substances to occur, particles of each must collide together with the correct orientation. By correct orientation, we just mean they have to hit each other at the right angle. A bit like your hands have to collide in the right way to fit together. If one of these collisions between particles happens with enough energy, the activation energy, and leads to the formation of new products, the collision is described as successful. The greater the frequency of these successful collisions occurring during a reaction, the faster its rate. Orders of reaction with respect to a particular reagent show the mathematical effect of changing concentration on the rate of reaction. They are written as a small number as a superscript to the reagent in square brackets, representing concentration. Orders of reaction can only be determined using experimental data. If a reaction is zero order with respect to a particular reactant, changing the concentration of the reactant has no impact on the rate of the reaction. If a reaction is first order with respect to a particular reactant, changing the concentration of the reactant will change the rate of the reaction by the same factor. For example, doubling the concentration will double the rate. Halving the concentration would halve the rate. If a reaction is second order with respect to a particular reagent, changing the concentration of the reagent will change the rate of the reaction by the same factor squared. For example, doubling the concentration will quadruple the rate, or halving the concentration would quarter the rate. Recap done? Let's go! The rate of a reaction is essentially based on four things. The concentrations of reactants, the proportion of reactants colliding with the correct orientation, the energy these particles have, determined by temperature, and the activation energy of the reaction. If we know the effect and values of all of these things for a reaction, we can link them all together and calculate its rate, based on the specific temperature and concentration of reactants being used. Rate equations are expressions that allow us to do this, and they always have the same general structure. The rate of a reaction equals a constant, called the rate constant K, multiplied by the concentrations of reactants in the reaction, raised to the power of their order in the reaction. For example, imagine a reaction A and B forming products C and D. If the reaction is first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B, then the rate equation would be rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A to the power 1 multiplied by concentration of B to the power 1. Remember in chemistry we represent concentration of something using square brackets in expressions. Square brackets A means concentration of A in moles per decimeter cubed. Anything raised to the power 1 just equals itself, meaning we can simplify this equation down to rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A multiplied by concentration of B. Now, we've just said that the rate of a reaction is based on the concentration of reactants, the proportion of reactants colliding with the correct orientation, the temperature of the system, and the activation energy for the reaction. 
At first glance, a rate equation only seems to deal with the concentrations of reactants. However, the proportion of the reactants colliding, the temperature of the system and activation energy for the reaction are all accounted for in the rate constant K. All these factors can be combined together and their combined effect on the rate given as a value. There is actually a separate equation we can use to calculate K based on these factors, and it's called the Arrhenius equation. That's been covered in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. If at a specific temperature the rate of a reaction is known and the concentrations and orders with respect to all reactants are also known, a rate equation for the reaction can be constructed and rearranged to find the rate constant K. Rate constant K equals rate divided by the concentrations of all reactants raised to the power of their orders multiplied by each other. For the example we looked at earlier, rate constant K equals rate divided by the concentration of A times the concentration of B. However, as the value for K for a reaction is based on the temperature, frequency and proportion of collisions between particles, and the activation energy for the reaction, any changes to these mean the value of the rate constant K would also change. If this happens, the rate equation for a reaction can no longer be used to calculate a rate if the value for k isn't changed in the expression as well. What we're trying to say here is that every time temperature changes, the value of k in the expression also has to change. What this really means for you is that every time temperature changes, the value of k in the expression also has to change. As a result, rate constants K are only for specific temperatures and therefore rate equations can only be used to show how changes in concentration directly affect the rate of a reaction at specific temperatures. Rate constants can also have different units for different reactions, depending on the molar ratios of reactant molecules involved. The units for rate are usually moles per decimeter cubed per second, and the units for concentration, moles per decimeter cubed. It is important to point out that rate equations can only be determined using experimental data, just like when determining the order of a reaction with respect to a particular reactant. Rate equations can provide really useful information to help us predict how reactions occur such as with mechanisms in organic chemistry. This has been covered in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. So, to summarize, rate equations show how changing the concentrations of reactants affects the rate of a reaction and allow us to calculate the rate of a reaction based on concentrations of reactants at a specific temperature. Rate equations contain three parts. Rate units of mole per decimeter cubed per second, concentrations of reactants raised to their orders, units of mole per decimeter cubed, and a rate constant K. Given a general arrangement of rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentrations of reactants raised to the power of the order of reaction with respect to their concentration. For example, for a reaction A plus B forming product C plus D, if the reaction is first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B, then the rate equation would be rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A to the power 1 multiplied by concentration of B to the power 1. The rate of a reaction is based on concentrations of reactants as well as temperature, activation energy, and the proportion of collisions between particles with the correct orientation. The rate constant K in the rate equation accounts for these other factors. As a result, its value is for a given temperature and activation energy only, and if the temperature of a reaction is changed, its rate constant K also changes. The rate constant K can have different units for different reactions. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.